Lucky here. It's the Pat and JT Podcast. Pat and JT Podcast. It's patandjt.com. Appreciate you checking that out because <laughs> that will tell you where you can listen to our podcast. If you're not listening somewhere already, you can listen there on the website if you want, mm-hmm. or you can click through it all the, all the platforms. It's, it's there. It's free. So uh, check it out, patandjt.com. It's kind of interesting, too, is that... Um, it, it, and some people are just now fi- finding it. And um, I ran into some people this last week. I was at the Saunders County Fair. Yeah. Saunders County Fair in Wahoo, right. saw, saw Nebraska. That on, saw that on Facebook. I've never been to the Saunders County Fair ever. It, uh, arguably the best county fair in the state. That's what I've heard. I would absolutely, I, I don't have any problem saying that. Yeah, I've heard the, it's fine. The people that put it together and no bias. My mother's been on the fair board and uh, the Ag Society like for 30 years. That's probably why it's the best. Um, <laughs> she, yeah. But um, she's, and she joined a group of people. I remember when she joined up and there was a really great article. I posted it a few days ago that was written by Susie Nelson from the Ashland Gazette and the Wahoo newspaper. And she, they were the grand marshals for the parade this year. That's pretty huge. Mom That's a big deal. Were. It's, it is. And it, and, and I'm really proud of them. And the, it, and they they did, they were just like oh come on just don't you know how it is yeah they didn't want to do it they don't like having the, the light on them yeah they just like to do their thing that's a huge honor and uh, a lot of really nice things have been said and and some people have posted some nice things and memories of back in the day you know when it first started because dad and mom got involved because I was showing horses and I was like six seven years old when I started. And um, 4-H, you joined at seven years old. And so we didn't know anybody, any of these people. Um, Because up to that point, mom and dad uh, were kind of like nomads a little bit because they had racehorses. Yeah. And we just had kind of settled into Ashland a little before that. Um, But anyway, and and they knew, obviously knew people in Ashland. There were horse, there were race trackers and other people like that. And and dad grew up there. But the whole whole (laughs) horse show stuff, the 4-H thing and, and all that stuff, and then got involved with... The shows, and then finally with the county fair. And dad was a superintendent for a number of years for the county fair, and mom was on the fair board, and they were just like all in, (laughs) (laughs) all in. And after I got done, which was many years ago, they stayed with it for many more years and did everything from that's awesome though running the gates, announcing the show. Great memories growing up around that kind of stuff. I mean, like county fairs in general. If you if you didn't, it's county fairs have changed a little bit since back in the day. Some of them have. Some of the local, like the Douglas County Fair, is still cool, but it's just changed. You know, it's kind of hard. You go to those um, (laughs) those other those kind of outlying counties from Omaha and Lincoln, and you go to those county fairs. They are so much fun. They had uh, see Dylan Scott, I think, was who was performing there. They had the figure eight races. They have. The, I mean, just all that stuff that every night there's something different going on at the fairgrounds, aside from the livestock, which there is a ton of that there. So that's where Dylan Scott was playing? And, yeah. So fast. And she's like, Dylan Scott's in town sometime this week, somewhere. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I haven't heard about it. Actually, the 2nd of August. Huh. <laughs> which would have been last night. I'll be damn. <laughs> Sorry, Soph. Sorry, bud. In Wahoo, yeah. Nebraska. Dang it. Um, yeah, they had, a, uh, That's that's gotten a ton of attention, of course. And um, all the other stuff that's going on. And, and like you go into the crafts buildings and you go in, you know, the cooking and, and all the pies and the, all the different stuff. Photography. Fun. I mean, there's so much stuff. And they've got just a great layout at, in Wahoo. I was I hadn't been there for a number of years, honestly. It's just, it seems like there was always other stuff that was going on yeah. with work or other things. And so to go back out there, first off, I hadn't driven out that way since the floods. Oh, right. First. And it's even been longer since I made it all the way to Wahoo. So I didn't know that Highway 92 now goes right on by the north side of Wahoo, where it used to go. You'd hit 77 and turn that, south. That was sure a shocker when we found out the first time, too. That was a, I'm like, like, what? Wait a minute. That used to be a... What? Yeah. Not, not four lanes. I'm going to tell know. you that. And, and it's I like, was, what? Yeah. It's been a minute. <laughs> but know. also, getting from Omaha to Wahoo, much easier. Uh, the Nebraska Department of Transportation, I just saw this story and I was like, yep, because I was, I was out there. I drove out on Dodge is the way that I went out because I, I wasn't sure about Center because it had both bridges out. And I hadn't heard anything lately. And actually, they had just released it on the 31st of July was when they reopened it. So I saw that post on that day. I'm like, man, that, that's, they, that's they moving. Booked. That's moving pretty fast. Right? So I grabbed that, that little, uh, little, little information piece here. And it's just said that since March 15, that both lanes have been closed because it, it, two bridges were taken out going across the river and 
really it's the whole thing. It was one big bridge, but there was just a little centerpiece that stayed where the little legs were. But um, the original structure, 80 feet long, single span, and they have the new structure now, 210 feet long, three span. And it said from 329 was when they did the contract. It took 139 days. That's really fast. And they had to because that's one of that's a major highway. And you know what? The concrete major will the concrete will dry as we go. <laughs> it doesn't I'm need sure to be 100 cured. I'm sure they built that. I in hope so. Somewhere. But also in related news, um, there will be an extended closure of the westbound Highway 64, which is West Maple. The ramp that normally allows access to westbound 275, that's going to be closed as of yesterday, Friday the second. In about four or five days. So it should open up again next week. But just so you know, because, okay. yeah, you head out that way and all of a sudden you're like, ugh, I know. turn around and go back the other way. It's such a huge, huge <laughs> now added convenience back to what it used to be, being able just to go out Center Street and never go clear all Take the way around. Take it for around. granted because you never realize how right. limited your options were to get from this side to that side of the river. Yeah. And you, like from Omaha, it's like, well, if you're on one of these three, then you're going to go down south and probably oh, know, boy. all the way down or all the way up north to hit around that way. And yeah, it's, a so, nice, it's, yeah, it's nice to have that back. Good for them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so the Saunders County Fair, so I was there this last week, um, and they had the parade. The parade's huge. I got some pictures, but they're really they're not real great because I was riding in a wagon. <laughs> and it was a wagon with genuine wooden wagon wheels. And when was uh, last we time you rode in a wagon? It hasn't been that long. Okay. <laughs> you know what, actually, yeah, never mind. But the wagons that, because <laughs> mom and dad had several wagons because they used to take the mule teams to all the parades to compete. So you've got wagons on, on the property. There so were that's wagons. Not a, that's not they such just a crazy been, question. They haven't been used for all, but the wagons that dad built all had tires on them. Smart. Not wagon wheels and shock absorbers. And then they were padded seats. None of those things were present. And this was a big wagon pulled by big horses. And I, and it's kind of weird, too, because I haven't been in a wagon where somebody was driving that I didn't know for ever. That's just a weird sentence. It's, it is, it's but I'm going to tell sentence. you what, when you're, when you're dealing with horses, you know, and, and somebody's driving, and I don't know their background, and you've got bands, and you've got cars starting, and you've got... yeah flags flying and you've got honking and then there's i mean so much stuff going on but the ponies did really well and so we went through the parade and there's a lot of brick streets that, that's kind of scary really if the, if the horses would spook and take off what are you going to do had it happen had you, it happen you've been in it you've yeah, been in, in north Platte. how scary was that um and it was it was really scary and there was it was something that and somebody it was either like you know, parades, you've got cannons going on. You know what I mean? You've right. got the, the reenactors. There's are clowns, there. there's, there's fireworks. There's, there's kids running in the street to pick up candy. There's so many distractions. And something That's happened, scary. and I, I can't remember how it all happened, but some, and then something broke because there was a sudden movement and something broke, and all of a sudden the mules were no longer attached to the tongue on the front of the yeah. wagon. And I think it was my dad's team, as a matter of fact, because he, like Superman, jumped off his wagon forward because he kept holding the reins because you don't want to let them go because they're connected together and then they're just going to take off oh, running. And talk about, yeah, Total just disaster. mow down everything in front of them. Yeah, and he was terrible. able to pull them back and stop them. But the other side of it was I was in the back of that wagon and I was and you're the riding shotgun or you're riding on the back if you had other people. So then the guy riding shotgun had to jump off because we had to stop the wagon because the wagon wasn't attached to the ponies anymore and it was just on its own. So there's not like a, like an emergency brake on some of them. I mean, maybe not, maybe not. There is on the driver's side. Oh, but got it. If you're riding shotgun, you don't have the, you don't have the brake next to you. Holy cow. And so we had to get out and drag our feet and stop the wagon before it got into the people. And so everybody was safe. You guys are heroes. We were heroes. That was terrifying though. That would be, that would scare me to death. Scare the crap out of me. Yeah. And so from then on, you're constantly, you know, it's just like you've got a little PTSD yeah. <laughs> when you're going in the parade because you know what could happen. Yeah. And we've had instances where, you know, like somebody else would be driving. They were letting them drive for a while because you know, the, the mules were like just so good. But if you tell them to go somewhere, they're going to go there. And if yeah. you're not paying attention, you end up in someone's yard. You know, right. I mean, stuff what happens. What can you do? But right. anyway, it, it was <laughs> uneventful as far as there were no disasters, no catastrophes. But they had a big old parade. And it was like a 20-minute to get through the whole parade from one side to the other, yeah. zigzag back and forth through Wahoo. The crowd was huge. I that's, mean, that's cool. It was, it was, how awesome. long is, is the, is it like a week long? Yeah. A little over a week actually. Cause the rodeo was the week before for a couple, three nights and then all of the next week through the next Sunday. Okay. So about 10 days. That's pretty sweet. Maybe all together. 
So anyway, awesome. Saunders County Fair, a tip of the hat because it was, it, it looked awesome. Everything looked so good. The fairgrounds looks great. So did you wave while you were in the wagon? Some people waved and so I waved back. I didn't do Are my there, queen wave. It was just a... If anybody has pictures of JT waving, <laughs> look, if you're at the Saunders County Fair, look. There were some people that saw me, haven't seen me in a long time that were just like, oh, oh my God. That's pretty cool. That's what's no fun idea. about those little the small town ones. Yes. If you grew up kind of in the area a little bit, you're going to run into people you haven't seen in a while. It was great. Ran into some people outside before we took off and uh, we're sitting there talking to them, telling old stories and back yeah, and forth fun. kind of stuff. And oh my gosh, yeah. It so was, yeah, post it was pictures. Tag us. If you have any pictures of JT <laughs> riding in the wagon, just look. Oh, God. Look for them. I can't wait. I can't. <laughs> look for them. But there was, it was so much fun. It was, it was just neat. And they've, they've done such a great job with that fair. And, and again, I will say it arguably the best county fair in the state. Yeah. I would, I don't have any qualms saying that whatsoever. So congratulations to everybody that did it. Um, other than that, let's see what else we've got in the pile of stuff today. Uh, Halloween is not that far away. So a friend of mine posted a picture. She was at, I don't know what store she's in. She's in Colorado and surrounded by Halloween candy. Already? I'm like, that's uh, too early. Uh, I mean, I thought September, September was early. Yeah. So you got all of August, September, October. So 90 days. Do they want us to be just diabetic cows? <laughs> like that, that is, that's unfair. It's, it's hard enough anyway. The point of purchase right at the, the cash yeah. registers have all that candy, but then you bring all the specialty stuff in so early. And the bite size or the, the, the fun size. Yes. Because those are the ones that have no calories. And you think, oh, it's one fun size. One. It, 15 fun sizes later, you might as well have eaten two candy bars. <laughs> Absolutely oh ridiculous. Now, it's well documented. The Pat and I love Halloween. Love the stories behind the scary things, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I like the lore. I like, um, local scary haunts. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of like scary houses, you know, like haunted houses where they're, you know, it's pay to go through. Oh, those they, are, they jump yeah, out they're... from behind walls and scare you. Cause That's, they can't, they can't touch. Like, you know, if you, if you really think about it, yeah. like legally, they can't do anything no. to you. So it's like, that's not all they can do is surprise you. Yeah. And that's about it. And like when you're in the pitch black, and then somebody's. I mean, that's scary. But that's not worth okay. fourteen fifty. No, and I like. You give me the... ten bucks, and I'll jump out of the closet screaming. <laughs> <laughs> ten bucks. Actually, you've done that for free. I have. I have. <laughs> he used to tag. He used to have a stupid. Oh God. He, the, he... I just found that duck call this week. Did you really? Green, yes, and it's at the house in the moving. I Say found the name it. of it again. Just a duck call. But you had it was oh, called... duck caller. It was a duck caller hiss. But I don't know if the hi... video is still up there. I'll have to find duck it. Duck call or hiss. <laughs> I have the video Thomas. of just, I have the, I don't have the whole produced video, but I have the video of just you walking in and you getting scared. I cussed. Yeah, did you I did. I cuss? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I'm uh, sure you probably did. We tried to, he tried to scare everybody in the building and he would hide and especially the people that worked early, early in the morning because all the lights were out. And so you'd walk in and he'd either have a duck call, which he would quack or. But I, I, I quickly retired the hiss because yeah. the hiss that wasn't as impactful no. as the no, duck call. The duck call. And I have, I have a video of you and I have video of Dave Wingert too. Being, oh. Getting scared. And he doesn't like, you guys are right on He's brand because doll. you instantly cuss and he just goes, ah! and he's like, like and just, oh my heavens. Yeah. yeah he he was did so, one of those, right? He was so funny. He is true to the yeah. core. So anyway, I don't know how we got on duck well, call. Well, the, 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 just, and I, 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 oh, I, Halloween. I, I love scaring people. I have a, the, <laughs> um, Oh, what's the stuff you use to clean off electronics? Like the compressed air? air? <laughs> That's exactly thing? what it is. Thank you. I couldn't think of the C word that started before the air. <laughs> um, we were, when we were moving, we found one of those with the little mm-hmm. nozzle on it. And Sophia was upstairs and she was on her way down to the garage. I'm like, I'm going to scare her. I'm going to sit right inside the garage, or right inside the door when she opens it and just <laughs> right in the face. That's not good. It was awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> her hair. <laughs> scared to death. It was so funny. <laughs> I love it. I bet she can't wait to move. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she can't wait for school to start. That's it. That's the first step. Mm-hmm. That's the first step. Your, your kid starts loving school. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there, one foot out the door. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, with Halloween just around the corner. And still, we, we, we've thought about this, and I know we've only got 90 days, so we need to put something together if we want to do a special podcast for Halloween. Yeah. We, yeah um, we whether will. we go somewhere to do it. If you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them. Because I know there was a time we thought about like doing it at the berry farm, um, we and other places, or or even like at one point, and we should do this honestly, is get the get the band back together and do the podcast like at the slowdown, or because I'm just going to throw these. These are ideas that are meant to like stir the pot, and maybe something will shake out. Um, but doing the podcast in front of an audience, 
before Halloween that we can put out on Halloween. Right, yeah. And then some people could come watch and, and like we'd have like Psychic Andy and the folks from Prism. and Or maybe if we put something out Squirrel like October jail. 1st so people can listen to it that whole month. It's, cause then if we put That's it on Halloween, days. yeah, we could do it. We could do it. Because mm-hmm. if we put it on Halloween, maybe then put it November October 1st 15th. the next day and we're already on to Valentine's Day practically. Practically. The way the stores are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll work, work, work out the dates, but we need a place. Yeah. We need a place. Waiting room would be fun. It would be. Something, Fairy Farm would be a, fun. A, a place that'd be uh, kind of intimate where you don't have a huge crowd, but like 50. Maybe-ish, 50 yeah. 50 to 100, you know, but something there. 50 people would be really, That's that was probably one of our funnest ones. It wasn't a huge crowd, but it was full, and everybody had their own stories and had their own questions, and we have the psychics, you have all that stuff going on. Yeah. The, and some scary yeah. music. The EVPs and, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, the EVPs. And, I love doing right. that. And we should get a hold of them. Actually, we should be calling Kelly at Prism. Yeah. And so, get that worked on. But like something that came up about Halloween is apparently um, Snickers had something to say about Halloween because Halloween is the 31st of October. The date changes all the time. And this is a problem a lot of people have with some other holidays as well. Um, July 4th. It is July 4th be, for a reason, but they people want to celebrate it kind of like the president's birthdays are always on Monday so that you'd have that three-day weekend, weekend, federal yeah. weekend or whatever, to celebrate it on a particular day, but the day would still be the same, Halloween, but always celebrate it like the last Saturday of, I of love October. That yeah, I love that idea. Honestly, I kind of do too. Or like Memorial Day, but Memorial Day or, or Labor Day. That you could celebrate it then, but then all the, the Wiccans and witches and stuff, you can still do your spells on Halloween night when, you know, All Hallows' Eve or whatever that stuff is, have your incantations and make your brew. Whatever, yeah. Whatever it is that you do on Halloween. But then you could have the kitties and everybody else wants to have their Halloween parties it would be on a particular night. That's my phone. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> and that I should have answered it. That was one of those uh, robot calls. You got to do that Dang next it. Time. Let's do that next time. Crap. So anyway, um, Snickers put out a, a notif- notification um, that they're wondering if the federal government could move Halloween to the last Saturday in October. And it, the post they put up was a Thursday Halloween, not satisfying. Halloween on the last Saturday of October, satisfying. If the government makes it official, we'll offer a free, free one million Snickers to America. Jeez, that's a good deal. Now there are three hundred million people, so there are going to be some squabbles. But, but still, that's I, I just in general, I like. I it just sounds love the big. I, I love the idea. I love the idea of doing it on every. Honest, you can guarantee it's a Saturday. Not it's, have to be it's tired. It's always going to be on a Saturday. Yes. The kids don't have to get up and go to school the next day. You don't have to hurry up and go do it quick in the evening. You don't have to hurry home from work and get everybody changed. It's on Saturday. Love it. So a petition to change the date to the last sac- Saturday has now over 150,000 signatures, and they're they're right at their goal, but they need more. So supporters of changing the date um, said it would be also safer as well, and they could celebrate longer because you don't have to hurry home and try and get out the door by 6 and get the kids home so they can get to bed to go to school yeah, the next maybe, day. Maybe, there, maybe there'd be more like parties and, and yes. dances and stuff like that for the you kids to go really to and have, have fun instead of doing it during during the week. And the parents could get to actually do some drinking and get a buzz <laughs> on because you don't have to get up and go to work the next <laughs> day. You could have the adult parties maybe on Friday and then the, you can take the kids out on Saturday. Maybe, um, uh, or take the kids out early and then drop them off. At the sure, scene. that's okay, whatever. better. So anyway, we will have that posted so make sure we don't forget that. I'm, put, the, I'm uh, noting it right now. We will have that posted so that you can, uh, if you want to sign the petition and be part of the movement. This is a movement I can I, get behind. I hate dressing up for Halloween, though. Absolutely. I, I, hate, I, I, I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> I, I, I think I liked it as a kid, but as an adult, I'm sorry. I think it's the dumbest thing. I do, too, because for I, I do. And I know there are a lot of people that love Halloween. The thing that gets me is the costumes. They aren't meant to be fun they're meant to be either a little blue <laughs> or a straight up whore <laughs> <laughs> that's the word i was looking for that's it I'll score that's what it, it was you. it's like if you if Everything. you default you either you're not going to be you don't have the puppies you don't have the hobos whatever like you did a long time well, ago you have thor who's in a toga and so he can show his muscles or yes. you have uh marcy <laughs> over there who you can see you almost can all of marcy any costume can be a sexy blank all you got to do is add fishnet that's right and there you go and that seems to be the default whether it's a witch it's never an ugly witch oh no with warts on her nose and green skin 
It's Sexy Witch. Yep. Like, what's her bucket? It used to be on uh, Cassandra. Remember? Cassandra. Um, she was the, oh, God. What was the name of the show that she was on? TV show. Oh, now I got to Google. Hold Cassandra on. Cassandra the Witch? Not Cassandra the Witch. She, that was her real name, Cassandra. Oh. She's an actress that she played a witch that hosted um, kind of like Dr. Sanguinary, but sexy. Elvira? <laughs> Mistress of the yes. Dark? Her oh, is, got it. Her real name's Cassandra. Okay. So Elvira started it, right? Push up bra, short skirt, good makeup. Is that where they up. got the cold as a witch's? I doubt it. That okay. was, I think that was around a long time before that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but yeah, that's, I think that's the problem is that when you go to find an adult costume, your choices are, are kind of slim unless you want to create your own. Like my neighbors did it one year and they all dressed like 60s, right? And, that, so, and that'd be fun. Hippie kind of stuff or something or, and, and the whole family kind of, did it together, so they, those are fun. Those, those are, are fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. And you have a theme for for the, everybody, and come up with something though that that's creative or a little different, funny, funky. Everything doesn't have to be sexy. No, I, I do. I do like the blow up kind of the T Rex you can be, Careful. and that's hilarious. I like. Oh, I, like I, had the, my, I like the tacos. I like the bananas. Those the, those costumes I was are kind pony. of fun. Yeah, remember that my one, pony? Yes, I remember that one. That was very fun. I like that yeah, one. So a those lot. are okay. And, and see, that's that's not sexy because I had a huge balloon around my butt. That is the opposite I of was, sexy. I had to like, excuse me, pardon me, so I yeah. could turn around because I was around a pony. But, but. I do love those costumes where if you you have to look at it a couple <laughs> times because where, where yours you look like a little little I little like person a on a horsey. Person on a horse and my feet were my legs it was just really really funny my that feet, was funny my, feet, my legs were the horse's, horse's legs feet. there we go something yeah, like that whatever. so anyway so okay so there you go that's your halloween notation um for this podcast um i do have let me grab here i was going to grab one of the notes that we got this last week i know we have text and voicemail we got to get to too this weekend and we will get to all of those uh one of them wrote in oh there's a couple of them actually remember when we were talking about connie Connie. What's Connie mean? Connie. Oh, uh, for blue balls. Blue balls used to be called blue balls at blue and they changed it to Connie. And we were thought, cause we were there and we ordered it. And we're like, with some blue balls. And like, well, the waitress didn't know what it was because she was new. She was training. And, she's like, and they said, it's called Connie now because apparently blue balls is offensive. A little too blatant. I don't know. It's blue is the name of the restaurant and they're balls. Are they? Yeah. And then they're, they're cut balls. in half. Yeah. Blue balls. And so they called it Connie. We couldn't figure out why. We thought it was because some lady named Connie complained, so they just named it. They begrudgingly <laughs> named it after her. <laughs> Thanks, Connie. <laughs> but it wasn't. Sadly, that would have been awesome. Yeah. Uh, Connie, we also were looking into the wrong language, apparently, because somebody did send it in under, I think it was in Japanese. might have been another Asian language. I'm not sure, but K-A-N-I means crab, and it's filled with crab meat. It's delicious. So and now I'm hungry for blue. I am too. <laughs> yeah. And then another one. Oh. We were talking about you going to the Dominican Republic. See, this is the cool thing. Some people we've noticed that have just figured out where we are. Uh, you know, they knew we went away, but y'all have lives. And we were part of your lives for many, many years in some instances. And then we were suddenly gone. And we couldn't say anything for three, four months. Mm -hmm. Three months, I guess it was. Um, other people tried you know, their best to spread the word. But unfortunately, you know, some people, you went on with your lives and... and um, doing other things and and some people are just figuring out oh my god pat and jt are still around and so this one she just started listening to some of the episodes so she's up to the dominican republic one when we were talking about you're going to be going there at the end of the year and we were just hearing about all these people dying yeah in the dominican it's kind of slowed down a little bit uh, well the reports have and you know we can trust the news to sure. get us all the information that i we believe need. i believe don lemon <laughs> I'm, says i'm a little behind on the episodes i've been listening to the ones about the dr uh, we went there in June, so just about six weeks ago, um, and that was when all the news was coming out. Ooh. But we felt super safe. The people there love Americans and are absolutely upset about the bad press that sure. they've been receiving. It says, as long as you're smart, you will have an amazing time. Okay. So, well, and we'll be smart. We're, that caveat. Yeah, we'll be smart. Thank God Beth's going with you. Right. Um, <laughs> Thank God all she likes to do is lay in a chair on the beach <laughs> and not do anything. Don't do ever do anything. Why, why go to an all-inclusive if you're going to go off the resort and go into the towns and go to bars and go to clubs? Yeah, don't do that. Don't but, do but that. But also if you're all-inclusive, because several of these have happened all-inclusive oh, as yeah. well. Yeah. Don't do the mini bar. I know that some places the mini bar is included. I've, I would never do, do the mini bar ever in, in one of those places. You're ride. already, it's already. Go to the biggie bar downstairs. Right. <laughs> Forget the mini bar. Right. Go to the big bar. You paid for it. Right. Thousands of dollars. Absolutely. 
Um, and then let's see. Oh, and then recently we had Ann Washburn on, who is the body language expert. I wish she could see you right now. Yeah. I, anyway. I, you know what? I don't really care. I, I sit girl cross leg, girl crossed all the time. I don't. And I actually default. I try. I have to think about not sitting like girls <laughs> or legs girl crossed. We learned a lot with Anne. And by the way, she's at Anne Body Language on Twitter, I do believe. And um, this screams um, confidence with my sexuality and my manliness. If I can sit like this, it screams something about. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's the co- something you, screaming. You ladies got to figure it out. This is the most comfortable way to sit. <laughs> anyway, so thanks for having Anne on. Uh, provided me with some topics for my next team meeting and pointing out sometimes it's me that needs to change. Uh, if you get a chance to listen to that episode, you'll enjoy it. You will, because it's just something completely different and it kind of changes the way you think about what body language is and what interpreting it really means. There you go. Just in case uh, in case you're listening to this out of order, I'll give you the exact episode of that one. Uh, I, you'd think I'd remember, but I don't. Um, uh, it is uh, 164, okay. so two episodes ago. That was Anne's. Yep. So there you go. So that's what I brought to the table. That a little county fair, a little Yeah, Halloween. a little mix. I didn't I don't have a lot to bring to the table except that's the girl awesome. girl cross sitting today. <laughs> just yeah, just not a lot. Just kind of sitting. That works chilling. well on a podcast. It does. Thanks for that. It is. See? Right there. Oh, and, you, and then you deep pocket it right one knee right behind the other one. This is super comfy. I don't care how much of a squirrel I look like. Okay. But it's super comfy. <laughs> and I sat like this at Kugler Vision when I was getting my eggs. When I was talking to Dr. Oh Kugler, God. that's how comfortable he made me feel. Uh-huh. I didn't even have to ask if I could sit with my uh, legs girl crossed. He didn't look at well, never mind. I don't know. That's I, I was, all right. My eyes were violently dilated. He may you have were... <laughs> looked at me. He may have looked you at me very weird. Known at that moment. No, I'm like, ah. I actually was talking to not him for a while because I was looking the other direction. <laughs> that was a mirror. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> of myself. <laughs> Kugler Vision, uh, sponsor of our, spo- of our podcast, and we're really happy to have them as a supporter for us, and it means a lot to us. Uh, during the month of August, they have a contest going on. So if you've been thinking about ditching the contacts, getting rid of the glasses, and you want to find out what your options are, the consultation is the first step. You you make that consultation appointment on their website at kuglervision.com. With that, when you go in for the consultation, you're automatically entered in their contest. You don't have to do anything. Super nice. Just show up, have the consultation. You walk away knowing what your options are, knowing how your eyes are doing. Uh, Possibly for some people, they could have that, that procedure done the same day, which is really cool. Yeah. And still be entered in the contest, which the contest will be over August 30th is when they'll make the announcement of the winner. But what they're going to do is give away this phenomenal prize pack. And it's all about schools, your favorite teacher, whatever you want it. They've got like a $250 prize pack for your school or your favorite teacher, plus a $100 gift card that continues to help them out with supplying their class. And then you get a $150 uh, party at the mark for right? you and your friends. I mean, and that's uh, been going to the mark before. That goes a long way by yeah. a lot of friends. It'd be a lot of fun. So you can kiss a little butt with the teachers, kiss a little <laughs> butt with your friends. Um, and okay, and then in tomorrow's episode, speaking of school supplies, because yeah. this, winning this thing from Kugler Vision would be awesome yes. for the teachers and the kids. Um, but I got to tell you about it, just school supply. It, we're, everybody's in that mode right getting now. So it's the perfect thing mode. to get entered. So yeah, I, I have a little secret on where okay. to get school supplies. Well, that's I'll a tease for the next podcast. Yeah. yeah. All right. So get online at kuglervision.com. You can check on the procedures. That's where you got to go. And it explains all. It's super, super easy to use website. It gives you a ton of information, but that's where you'll see the consultation button. And please let them know that you heard about it on the Pat and JT podcast. Thank you for listening, rating, reviewing, subscribing, and being very, very nice. Pat and JT podcast, a Parkville Media production.